Hello everyone. Welcome to another module on the renal system. In this module, we will talk about nephritic nephrotic syndrome. Okay. This is a combination of both nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. I have already discussed the basic principles in the difference between nephritic nephrotic and nephritic nephrotic syndrome. I will just revise it once again. In nephritic nephrotic syndrome, there is a severe damage to the glomerular basement membrane. Okay, that is severe nephritic syndrome, which leads to loss of RBCs into urine. And since it is on a severe level, there is also excessive proteinuria. And hence, it is in the nephrotic range. Okay. So the proteinuria is more than 3.5 grams per day that is in the nephrotic range and has a concomitant features of nephrotic syndrome. That means it has some features of nephrotic syndrome as well. Now it can occur in multiple forms and the two most common forms are diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis and membrano proliferative glomerular nephritis. So what is diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis? Now, first of all, remember that nephritic nephrotic syndrome are associated to SLE, that is systemic lupus erythematosus. And it is majorly related to type 4 lupus. This is very important. Okay, it is majorly related to type 4 lupus. It presents as nephrotic syndrome, that means there is increased proteinuria. And there is also symptoms of nephritic syndrome that means there is RBC in the urine. Now when we look at the histology we see there is looping of the capillaries and hence it is visible in light microscopy as well. There is looping of capillaries. What do we see in immunofluorescence? There is granular immunofluorescence. I've discussed all the immunofluorescence pattern in nephrotic syndrome module. So please check that. In this, we see granular immunofluorescence, which is due to intramembranous immunoglobulin G and C3 deposition. Okay. This is visible in electron microscopy that is subendothelial and sometimes even sub-epithelial or intramembranous IgG or C3 immune complex depositions. So this is all about diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis. Now let's talk about a very important nephritic nephrotic syndrome that is membrano proliferative glomerular nephritis. It is a nephritic syndrome that co-presents with nephrotic syndrome. Okay. And it is in two types. The type 1 may be secondary to hep B or hep C infection and may also be idiopathic. Okay. It may be secondary to hep B or hep C infection or can be idiopathic. Now what happens is there is subendothelial immune complex deposition with granular immunofluorescence. This is very important. We see granular immuno immunofluorescence due to immune complex deposition in the subendothelial cells. This is type 1 membrano proliferative glomerular nephritis. Okay. Now what is type 2? In this there is dense deposit. Hence it is also called as dense deposit disease. Okay. And the deposits are present in intramembranes. So it is intramembranous deposits called as dense deposit disease it is associated with c3 nephritic factor this c3 nephritic factor decreases the c3 levels now what happens is due to immunoglobulin g anti antibody autoantibody which stabilizes the c3 convertase results in persistent activation that means due to this antibody autoantibody action there is c3 convertase stabilization now, due to this, there is increase in the activity of C3, which results in decrease of C3 levels. 
the activity that means the work or the activation of the complement is increased which results in decrease in the C3 levels. Am I clear? Hence, it is associated with C3 nephritic factor due to overactivation of the complement system, due to overactivation of this complement system, there is decrease in the circulating levels of C3. Now in both the types, the mesangial ingrowth leads to glomerular basement membrane splitting. Now, let me just zoom into this diagram. Here, we can see there is a glomerular basement membrane splitting, which leads to something called as tram tract appearance in HNE or PA stains. Is it clear? So, this is all about membrane proliferative glomerular nephritis. This is poorly responsive to steroids and hence can progress to CKD that is chronic kidney disease due to its less response to steroids. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.